in this world, a man himself is nothing. And there ain't no world but this one. I've seen another world. Sometimes I think it was just my imagination. If I go first, I'll wait for you there. On the other side of the dark waters. Why should I be afraid to die? I belong to you. I'm going straight up that hill there. How many men do you think it's worth? How many lives? There's nowhere we can hide except in each other. thing you can do, nobody can touch me for it. Make no difference who you are. No matter how much training you got, how tough a guy you might be, you're in the wrong spot at the wrong time, you're gonna get it. I want you to attack right now with every man at your disposal. I've lived with these men, sir, for two and a half years, and I will not order them all to their deaths. <laughs> We all men got one big soul everybody's a part of. All faces of the same man. What's your name? What difference do you think you can make one single man in all this madness? You're just too soft-hearted. You're not tough-fibered enough. Have you ever had anyone die in your arms, sir? Who lit this flame in us? Because I have you, nothing can touch me. No hurt, no grief, not even death. star cast in a gripping new World War II movie, which is already being touted as a likely Oscar contender. Now only we can take you into the battle zone on the set of The Thin Red Line in this E.T. first. What I think is important is that it just shows the, the horror of war, the intensity of war. First spot! Back and left! The Thin Red Line brings to frightening life the bloody battle of Guadalcanal. Let's go! But what looks like hell on earth is actually closer to a choreographed dance. Yeah! 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 Every explosion, every rifle shot is carefully planned out with the help of this fearless platoon of actors, led by Nick Nolte, Woody Harrelson, Jim Caviezel, Ben Chaplin, and John Cusack. Nolte plays oh, Lieutenant fuck Colonel fuck Gordon fuck Tall, who orders Cusack to lead his men against the Japanese stronghold. Do you see the spirit in these men? Do you see the new spirit? Well, I want to take advantage of that before something happens to set their strength. Tall is the guy that pushes these men to go up the hill. Tall's not going to die himself. Tall is not going to kill anybody. You're going to be all right. You're going to go home. Recreating World War II with more than 200 actors and extras is a tall order. But director Terrence Malick has won the admiration of his troops. Well, I think, you know, really good directors are, are mad, really, to try to accomplish what they want to accomplish. And I think Gary's, in, in that sense, is insane. Wow, that looks intense. The Thin Red Line opens in New York and Los Angeles one week from Wednesday, then nationwide on January 15th. Looking for salvation by himself. Each like a coal thrown from the fire. Sean's character, Welsh, is is a little more of the 
um, hardened, uh, somewhat cynical uh, sergeant who's, who's been through it before, feels that you know, survival is the main thing that he can achieve out of this conflict. And Witt's character, on the other hand, feels that there must be, must be more to this than just the carnage and surviving the carnage. In this world, a man himself is nothing. And there ain't no world but this one. Here on their top, I've seen another world. What he uh, is dealing with is his past, that we all have one. And sometimes our past um, can dictate what our future is going to be like. He feels he's indebted to, you know, as far as losing his parents. He blames himself for his father's death, so he's trying to make, make amends with, with that. Um, and that's a journey that he goes through. I wondered how it would be when I died. What would it be like to know that this breath now was the last one you was ever going to draw? The third was place I've ever been, and you're in, a, you're in a tent with no bottom and poisonous spiders and snakes and stuff around. It gets kind of cold in there, and um, it was always raining. In the jungle, you just stay wet, and at night it gets cold. You had to um, get next to a guy real close to share his body heat because it was it got pretty cold. It's not even funny at this moment, <laughs> early in the morning. We did a lot of, um, a lot of weapons training. Society that teaches us uh, not to not only strike, hurt another person, kill another person, but not to speak ill of another man. So when they said, okay, here's a rifle, go and kill now, rocks your world. And many of them had to do that. Green of um, lustrous um, fruit and, and vegetation and uh, blood. Somebody cut it now. The journey came full circle as the filmmakers and ensemble cast of The Thin Red Line were reunited for the celebrity-filled premiere in Los Angeles. It was the opportunity to welcome back a Hollywood master and view his artistry in motion. You know, I always loved Vanishing of the Evils of War, as powerful as any personal prayer that you could say in a moment of tragedy. It was so... Cast and invited guests continued the celebration in grand style inside Stage 8 on the 20th Century Fox studio lot. The elegant surroundings were further highlighted by an 80-piece orchestra, which played Oscar-winning composer Hans Zimmer's highly evocative score. Terrence directs, um, and the way he puts other people before himself, he's a, he's a class act. Um, he's, uh, uh, he's a far better person than he is a director, and that says quite a bit because he's a pretty brilliant director. And even though Nick Nolte was declared unfit for military service in the 1960s, he gives a powerful performance as a tough military man in The Thid Red Line. I talked to Nolte about his new movie, its mysterious director, and the actor's anti-war clash with Uncle Sam. Now, do you hear me, Stiles? I want you to attack. I want you to attack right now with every man at your disposal. Versatile veteran actor Nick Nolte plays World War II battalion commander Colonel Tall in The Thin Red Line. Nolte gives a solid performance in the Terrence Malick feature. It's one of the best movies I've seen this year. The director's script description of Colonel Tall was stupid, ambitious, desperate to succeed. Yes. Did you feel that he was stupid? No. I felt that he's not going to die. He's going to have somebody else is going to die, but he's not going to die. Yeah. No, I didn't feel he was stupid. Uh, what we did, uh, Terry and I, we, the the phrase that we used to describe Tall as self will run riot. Huh. You no, know, it's it's his will, and he needs this war, and he needs this war to advance. He needs to for him to advance. Uh, in that way, he's a romantic. He's a he's a West Pointer, so he he has a romantic view of war. Mm -hmm. He 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 doesn't see the horror of it. You don't know what it feels like to be passed over. I mean, you're young. You you you're just out of the academy. You you, you know you you got your war. This is 15 years. This is this is my first war.
Someday you'll understand. The thin red line has a strong anti-war message. It's a message Nick Nolte has had in his private life. Did you once have some trouble counterfeiting draft cards? Yes. No, I didn't have trouble counterfeiting them. I sold them. <laughs> this was during uh, the 60s, during Vietnam. We sold uh, counterfeit draft cards. They called it counterfeit government documents, and they gave me 45 years and $75,000 fine and suspended it and put me under probation during the rest of the war, which was fine by me because it made me a felon, uh, which meant that uh, I wasn't fit for military service. The director, writer of Nolte's new Fox film is the acclaimed yet reclusive filmmaker Terrence Malick. And action! He has not made a movie in 20 years. His behavior has been compared to Greta Garbo, J.D. Salinger, who wrote Catcher in the Rye, and Howard Hughes. If he is nominated for best director and best screenplay writer, as he, he should be, would he show up at the Academy Awards? Yeah. Yeah. And that's my guess. And if you're nominated, you will show up too? Yeah. The Thin Red Line could win the battle for Oscar nominations on the morning of February 9th when they are announced in Hollywood. The Thin Red Line opens tomorrow. Today's Daily News, page 48, uh, picks Nick Nolte as a frontrunner in the Oscar Best Actor race for his performance in the upcoming film Affliction. And he'll talk about that performance next week with me here on Good Day New York. Jim Murray. my home in Breathitt County. Bet you get a lot of friends, huh? I miss them. I miss my family. You got a big family. When are you going home? What does it take not to burn you out? Go ahead, roll, motherfucker. I got a headache. I mean, they keep hitting me in the head. And I just, I'm supposed to stand up, sit up straight, stand up straight and be quiet. I have something I gotta say. Every generation contains the potential for greatness. For the generation that came out of the Depression, that potential was tested on the battlefields of World War II. Had those men and women failed that test of their greatness, we would live very different lives today. To our and our children's good fortune, they did not fail. Instead, they triumphed. Two of the films nominated this evening for Best Picture depict specific incidents in World War II. But we must remember that every segment of our American mosaic contributed to the ultimate victory so hard and painfully won. In the thin red line, director Terrence Malick deals with the war in the Pacific, juxtaposing the tranquil, simple lives of the native Melanesians of the Solomon Islands against the vicious, mechanized battle being waged by the courageous soldiers of Charlie Company, fighting an enemy obsessed with avoiding defeat at any cost. Here are scenes from The Thin Red Line. What difference do you think you can make one single man in all this madness? 
If you die, it's going to be for nothing. There's not some other world out there where everything's going to be okay. It's just this one. Just this rock. 